This is the Sketch Organized Solve SOS for how to solve energy. So energy is very much that we kind of give up knowing everything that's happening at all times and more just comparing a before state and an after state. So to help with that, when we start sketching things, we want to sketch the before and the after states so we can clearly label what's happening for this. So whatever we can label, that will help us quite a bit. And then once we finish this sketch, we want to draw an interaction diagram. So we'll draw kind of a sample interaction diagram right here. So we're going to have a couple of objects. We will define a system around one or more of the objects. And then we have certain forces. Dealing with our different objects, so we don't want to get too much deep into it. As we look into these forces, as we look into this, right? Do all the forces conserve energy? And the only forces that we have to worry about are the forces that are either inside the system or interacting with the system. So we don't have to worry about whether this force conserves energy or not. And that might be a choice of why we chose this system instead of this system is because this force doesn't conserve energy. So that's a very good question to ask yourself. Once we have all this, we want to write continue with our sketch and then draw bar charts for the energy before and after. And we'll deal with that very, very soon. As we then organize our thoughts, when we're looking at this interaction diagram, it's going to tell us a whole bunch of how we organize, right? Our kinetic energy is the sum of k's for all of our objects in the system. So k system initial would be k1 initial plus k2 initial. And if we had more, then we'd have to do that. For our potential energy, is each interaction inside or through the system. So for this orange line, we're only counting the one interaction. We're not counting this force plus this force. We're counting this one interaction once. We're counting this one interaction once. So then the potential energy, which we use u for our system initial, would be u and i, u2 i. And then if we had more, we would do that. So then we want to then write check if we have any external work or if we have any change in thermal energy. If we don't, then we have our mechanical energy is conserved and we have the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy is equal to the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. So if we can say that we don't have any external work or external thermal energy, and that's through a choice in our system, then we can use this. As we're then solving this, right, If we have work external, it goes on the left-hand side, or the initial side. 
if we have delta E thermal, it goes in the right hand side or the final side. So hopefully, very luckily, we just have right conservation of mechanical energy, and very likely we'll just have right a one equation, one unknown, if we have it. But also, it might be such that right one equation, one unknown, or all of this setup is just part of the general solution of this. So if not, we might need forces, kinematics, or even later understandings like momentum or something else, or just write initial or given conditions. to solve our equations. So we're going to try to get some practice with just one equation, one unknown. But the real power of energy is how we can bring it into other equations, into other ways of solving things. So look out to have to see if we need to use more than just energy, or if energy is just a part of it. So this is how we sketch, organize, and solve using energy.